Water makes up 70 to 90 percent of the human body, including 95 percent of blood plasma. Many health authorities recognize that dehydration is one of the most common causes of illness. Chronic dehydration is often part of a chronic disease process. Healthcare costs are spiraling so quickly that the Healthcare Financing Administration predicts that by 2030, Americans will pay over $16 trillion per year. Recently, the World Health Organization ranked the U.S. 37th best in the world in healthcare system performance. Consumer unease with U.S. healthcare grows, and it's no wonder. Americans are rapidly becoming the heaviest people on earth, with overweight Americans now significantly outnumbering those who maintain a healthy weight. In Nagic Incorporated, a Japanese company founded in 1974, is trying to make sure that you don't end up being one of these statistics. Enagic has a technology that turns ordinary tap water into Kangen water. Enagic's flagship product is the Levelux SD501. This amazing water is a highly energized alkaline water produced with a continuous ionized electrolysis water generating system. Enagic is ISO 9001, ISO 14001, and ISO 13485 certified. Along with these certifications, Enagic is a proud member in good standing with the Direct Selling Association. Other awards include the prestigious International Earth Environment University Environmental Award, awarded to select companies for outstanding achievement in environmental services. Kangen water has three important properties that distinguish it from regular water. These properties are the antioxidant value, alkalinity, and microclustering property. In the next few minutes, you will learn about each of these properties, as well as other important benefits to having an Enagic ionizer in your home. Oxidation is the rust on a pipe or the breakdown that occurs when you cut an apple and it turns brown. Antioxidants slow down or stop that process and are found in many fruits and vegetables from Mother Nature. The Japanese call this Kangen water. Kangen translates to return to origin. This antioxidant property of Kangen water can be measured with an ORP meter. This digital meter measures the oxidation reduction potential. A positive reading means it is oxidizing whereas a negative reading means it is not oxidizing or an antioxidant. Let's look at the ORP values of some of the most popular beverages on the market today and compare them along with Kangen water. I'll go ahead and clean that off now. And when we get our first one, let's go ahead and see what that reading is right there. We've got about a positive 363. Go ahead and go into the next one here. Let's get that all cleaned off. I'll bring that right there. And let's see, what are we getting there for a reading? A positive, what, 292? Pretty good, 296. I think we're going to go over 300. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to the next one there. Now remember, these are positive numbers. We're looking for a negative number. So this means that all of these are actually oxidizing substances to our bodies. So we'll go ahead and we'll go in here to the vitamin water. And we've got what? A positive 214. We'll go ahead and put that back in the clean water. Now we'll get over here into the Dasani and we'll see where the Dasani registers. Now the Dasani is a positive 100 168, 172, as you can see, it's continuing to climb. We're going to be over 200 here in a moment. That's going to continue to go up. We'll go ahead and just clean that one off. And we'll come back here and we'll check the Aquafina. The Aquafina, we've got a positive, look, it looks like about 150 thus far. It's going to keep on going. We're up to about 180. And I think as we sit and watch it, it's going to be the same as the Dasani. It'll continue to climb to over 200. 
We'll go ahead and bring this over. In fact, I'm going to skip and come right over to the tap water and we'll come back and do our Kangen water. Now the tap water has a positive 300, what is that number now, 325, 334, over 350. I think we'll find that'll continue to climb to, to well over 400. And as we sit and watch that go, um, I think you're going to see that it will. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the next. We're going to come back now and let's see what the Kangen water, the 9.5. Go ahead and put this in here. Now what we're looking for here is a negative number and I think you can see right now we are at a minus 349, minus 350. You know we're riding right around the 349, 350. So minus 350, that is a huge change. Enagic ionizers producing Kangen water had the only beverage with a negative reading and the only one with a powerful antioxidant property. In its natural, healthy state, the human body is slightly alkaline. The majority of beverages being consumed today are acidic. To help yourself maintain alkalinity, you should drink less beverages that are acidic like soda and bottled water and more beverages that are alkaline. Kangen water is your best choice. Let's look at the next property, the alkalinity. Let's go ahead and test the pH of each of these drinks. Now the pH is done where we use actually pH test drops and these test drops are actually the same drops that you would use to test the pH in a pool. And We're just going to put four drops into each of these glasses. Now the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14 and what you want is you want to be on the high side. You want to be as high as you can get. You don't want to be on the low side. So we're going to go ahead here. We're going to stir these up. And we're going to stir up this first one here, the Sprite. And you can see on the, basically on the low side of the pH scale, you've got very, very, you know, an orangish color, which is what you don't want. You get into here to the vitamin water. I thought vitamin water was supposed to be good for you. Well, it's got a very uh, low pH to it. We get in here to the reverse osmosis waters. This surprises a lot of people when they actually see this reverse osmosis water. You, know, you go to the store and you buy these bottles and you think that it's really good for you, but yet you can see it just doesn't have that much of a pH value. Now this last glass, this is the tap water. Now this tap water here is uh, it's blue. And some people get excited about that because actually the pH value of this compared to all these other drinks is much better. Uh, much better, but what they don't tell you is that the federal government mandates um, that tap water be at least 7.0 in pH. And so because of that, uh, they use various chemicals, lyes, and anything they have to to put into that water to get it to go to here. In fact, a lot of times when you filter this water, you will actually see that the pH values come back to this range once some of those chemicals are filtered out. Um, so let's see what happens when we actually take some of our 9.5 water here and we just mix a little bit of it right in. Look what we just did to that tap water. We changed that tap water and we took it from a, an acidic or actually it was a somewhat neutral state uh, to a very uh, alkaline state. We're going to do the same thing over here to the Aquafina and it very quickly turns purple. You can see that. Here we go again. We're going to get it to go purple just by mixing in some of our water. Now these other three over here, I actually want to, uh, I want to go ahead and use our water, our 9.5 water, and I'm going to pour it directly in. Now watch what happens when we do this. Isn't that amazing? We're not getting any color change at all. In fact, if I go over here, we're not going to get any color change in either of these drinks. They are so acidic that it's actually going to take anywhere from 25, 30, cups of our water, of 9.5 pH water, when we mix it into these other waters, to, or these other drinks, to actually get it uh, to go neutral. In fact, I'm going to show you that because this is so potent. I mean, look at this soda here. This soda is so potent that if we just take a tiny bit and put it right into one of these cups, it immediately takes away the alkalinity of these. I mean, take a look at that. It is just, it's absolutely gone. And so very, very quickly, you can take uh, an alkaline 
uh, substance and turn it into a very acidic substance. The body has a truly remarkable and complicated water regulating system that rations water when it's in short supply until it receives unmistakable signals that it has access to an adequate supply. The problem is that some organs, like the brain, are higher on the priority list for water than others. Symptoms are the result of stressed organs that are dehydrated. This is much the same type of signal your car would give if the cooling system were overheating while climbing a steep hill. In both cases, if proper measures are not taken, a breakdown can occur. When asked how much water they drink each day, most people answer, not enough. We know that we should drink more water, but most of us don't make it a high enough priority. In fact, many people are confused as to how much water a person is supposed to drink. Most doctors will tell you that we should drink eight eight ounce glasses of water per day. But is it a one size fits all answer? Common sense would indicate that a 250 pound person would need more water to maintain their 75% hydration level than a 125 pound person. And what about someone who is very physically active or someone who works in a hot climate versus a person that is sedentary and perhaps stays indoors the majority of the time? Researchers have discovered that the most consistent trait of long-lived clusters of healthy people on the planet is the water that they drink. In his book, The Water Puzzle and the Hexagonal Key, Mu Shikzan, PhD, and one of the foremost water authorities in the world, states, Hexagonal water is energetically more powerful. It is the obvious biological choice. Kangen water has some of the same properties as hexagonal water. A regular water cluster does not absorb as quickly or as easily as a smaller Kangen water cluster. Kangen water is more readily absorbed by the body and allows for better hydration. This smaller cluster is also why Kangen water tastes so soft and silky. Let's demonstrate the microclustering property of Kangen water. Now we're going to make tea or attempt to make tea with a water uh, that is not, you know, it's not hot. We're not going to allow this to steep. It's just a room temperature water. And now I want to make uh, some tea with our 9.5 water. So we're going to go ahead and run us here another, another quart of our 9.5 water. We're going to give that, uh, that first tea just a little bit of time. We're going to let it attempt to make tea from that reverse osmosis water. Remember what we, what we talked about, reverse osmosis water is, is what the Japanese call a dead water. It doesn't have any minerals in it at all. And in fact, when you put that water into your body, it can actually deprive your body of some of the, the essential minerals and nutrients that it has in it because water, like anything, will balance itself out when it goes into your body. So now we'll just go ahead and take this cup here and we're going to pour a cup of tea with our water. And I think you already see what is happening here. We have got tea. What I want to do is I want to give this one a little spin. We'll give this one just a little spin here. We'll just stop. Look at that. You've got two different cups here, same tea bags. One is obviously having a hard time making anything. And you've got this one here, which looks like a perfectly good cup of tea. Now what's amazing about the microclustering properties is, is it actually will multiply the amount of nutrients that you're putting into your body and actually enable your body to use uh, those nutrients. So as I slide this next tea bag over, watch what's going to happen. I can take this tea bag now and I can come over here and I can make another cup of tea. How about that? I mean, this property alone is amazing. For folks out there that, that like to drink coffee, you can go ahead and make your coffee and you can, uh, you can use about half the coffee beans that you would normally use and get just as good a cup of coffee. And look at this, there's another cup. I think we could go on and on here and, and make anywhere from 15, 20, 25 cups of tea off of one tea bag. And there's actually nothing wrong with this at all. This is a fantastic tea and it tastes tastes exactly like green tea should taste, and yet it's just regular room temperature water. Let's come back over here to this little guy and let's see what's going on here. He's having a hard time getting started. I don't know too many people that would actually want to uh, drink that cup of tea, but take a little look though. I don't think there was anything wrong with the tea bag. The problem, <laughs> the problem was the water. 
Many healthcare experts now recommend that you drink a minimum of one half of your total body weight in ounces of water each day. One reason that people don't drink enough water is that all too often water just doesn't taste very good. So we drink other beverages instead of plain water. Unfortunately, many of these beverages are polluting our internal environment and reducing our body's thirst mechanism in the process. This problem has led to one of the largest new industries in America, the bottled water industry. Let's take a look at just one company to see what's happening in this growing industry. Coca-Cola has 30 plants across America bottling their Dasani water. The source of this water is the local municipality. And for your information, the FDA does not require that purified or bottled water have the source of the water listed on the label. This filtered water is then placed into plastic bottles and shipped all around the world. But even if this were the answer to our drinking water problem, it just created another major problem. Plastic bottles overrunning the landfills of our nation. The bottling companies want us to believe bottled water is the answer to our water problem so that we will continue to buy it. Bottled water has now become the second largest beverage segment behind soft drinks. Bottling companies are even trying to make consumers believe by having the word water on the label somehow makes it good for you. Having an enagic ionizer in your kitchen when you're preparing food will transform your meals from ordinary to extraordinary. From watching your fruits and vegetables, cooking, baking, preparing soups, and more. When you cook with Kangen water, it will bring out the flavor of all your ingredients. You can also remove chlorine from your water and keep it out of your food as well. Everyday Kangen. Let's prepare some vegetables and take a look at what's being found on our food and in our water. In this jug, we have an 11.5 pH water that comes out of the machine when we come over here and we set it at the 2.5 setting. We actually make an 11.5 water. And just to show you what it looks like, it looks like uh, any other ordinary water. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and fill that first cup up. I'll just pour that right there. And now for the second tomato cup, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use just some regular bottled water because I think a lot of us are starting to learn. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to see what's being talked about in the news, all the different chemicals that we're finding in our tap water. And so now let's remember that this one on the left, we're going to set this right here. In fact, I'm going to put this jug right here so we remember. And this one on the right, we're actually going to test the chlorine the amount of chlorine that we have in this, in this tap water. So we'll put four drops there. We'll go ahead and stir this up. And that yellow color, you can see, is a ton of chlorine. That is a, that is a lot of chlorine. And of course, that chlorine's put in there, I guess, to protect us. But I certainly don't want to put this chlorine into my body. But here's what happens when we go down to the store and we buy a fruit or a vegetable or whatever it is, and we decide to wash it off. We would normally put that right under the tap. And we're going to show you what happens when you do that. Just going to give this a little stir, just like we would. And if you do that, watch what happens here. As we pour this out, take a look. What happened to that yellow chlorinated color? You know what happened. It's gone. The reason it's gone is it absorbed right into the onions, which now, of course, we're going to eat. I just put more chlorine drops in there to see how much chlorine's left in that water, and there's none. So let's go back now to these tomatoes, and let's see what's happened. Get a couple more glasses here, and let's go ahead and take a little look here. This is with the Dasani. Reverse osmosis water uh, is, is in a lot of homes. People have these filter systems that are built right in, and basically they do it because they think that that water is very, very good for you. Now, what did we wash off of these tomatoes with that water? I think you can tell it doesn't look like much. That looks like regular old clean water. We'll come over here and let's see what we washed off of this first set of tomatoes. Look at that water. 
That yellow color right there represents the pollutants that we actually have that are on those tomatoes. Typically, you would actually uh, you would actually eat these, and if you were to taste the difference between the two, you will not want to eat these tomatoes. I think everybody knows that as you mix water and oil, they don't mix. Just like we've been taught in school, everything we've ever been taught, that's exactly what happens is they don't mix. The oil just floats right to the top. But what's pretty amazing about our water is that you've got, we'll take some more of this 11.5 water, this water has cleaning powers that are so amazing that you can actually, when it comes to cleaning those tomatoes as we saw, it took everything off of those tomatoes. Most of the uh, herbicides and pesticides today are oil-based, so anything that they're putting onto our foods, they make it oil-based so it doesn't uh, wash off when it rains. It makes sense. But when we take our 11.5 water now and we actually pour this into olive oil, look what just happened. That is completely emulsified right in the cup. That's amazing. There's chemists out there that say that's impossible. That shouldn't happen. But look at that. We just emulsified this oil. Talk about cleaning properties. Talk about being able to clean your shower or clean the car or clean anything greasy. You know, if the kids go out and get something on their clothes that they shouldn't have, you're going to be able to cut it and break it down. But this oil, you know, it represents the gunk and the junk in the body. And look at how if we put the right water into our body by, by putting a high pH water in our body, we can actually take this right out of it. You just saw the 11.0 pH strong congan water that is used for cleaning, not just in the kitchen, but in the rest of the house as well. It can break down grease and oil, and it is a great stain remover. While the machine is producing 11.0 pH water, it simultaneously produces 2.5 pH water. The 2.5 strong acidic water is environmentally green. You can use it for personal hygiene and toxic-free cleaning. Many people are concerned with the many chemicals being used in their homes, and this water can help reduce, if not eliminate, those toxic chemicals completely from your home.